Hello everybody and welcome back to Fire Emblem Awakening. In the last episode we got a new uh, unit, we got Nah. And I did train her up as you can see, um, I trained her up um, to uh, level 30 Manakeed, then to Dark Flyer to get Gale Force, and then back to Manakeed. She is probably one of my best units so far as you can see. Um, if you look at the bottom screen on the right of your, uh, on the or right, on the right of the layout, you can see a rating on the top right. Basically, that will count all the stats or something if I click on it. Yeah, there's some of the key stats. So as you can see, Yaloda, one of the best units, has 297. Uh, 97. This is what always happens to me, right? I want to say 79, but I say 97. I'm just, I don't know. So. Okay, that's fine, but I, I, as you can see right here, I have 304, which means this character is probably one of the best we have so far. Um, skills, of course, this is due to aptitude, which gives her uh, an extra stat boost. Well, as you can read there, it adds the chance of increasing a stat at a level up every time, so basically she gets all her stats up every level up, so she's very powerful. She's a Manakeet, which makes her already very strong. As you can see, she has the same amount of health as Yalorda has. And she also has a lot of Dragonstones plus. Which also make her more powerful. And if you go to the full view, you can see that I don't think all of her stats are maxed yet, which is nice. So we can still level her up even more. And boost her up. So yeah, Gale Force is going to be uh, very important. Uh, in combination with Life Taker, so she can restore health. Well, she will probably be able to take a lot of hits too. But, of course, we also have some other things to do. It's almost become like a formality to do this now, isn't it? To go through everything. Well, I said that in like episode uh, 30 something. Well, like 43, I don't know. But we have a lot to cover. I forgot to do some support conversations in the last episode, I believe. As I said, we will only feature the main ones in the beginning. And we featured a little... Uh... Accident, I guess, in, in the later half of the episode. When we're done with the uh, main book. We do have Donal and Naoi, and we have one with Yellow and Inigo, which we will uh, leave until... Later. Nope. So, even though Naoi is such like huh? a child, Naoi is the complete opposite. She's more like a like grounded, like leveled. She uh Yay. enjoys reading books. So she's mm -hmm. kind of like the, the the smart girl of the group of the children. Trust me. It's also kind of interesting because they seem to be the same age, but even though they're children, there's probably like 200 years. Of, well, actually, th nah, never mind. That's actually kind of a, a, an interesting thing, right? Because now we got a child that's about the same age, just like children like Lucina and stuff. So now it's like I, uh, I don't know, like somebody calculated it on some website. Let's say she's like 19. For a Manakeet, that's not a lot, of course, but she looks the same age as Naoi, and Naoi is like 300 years old, so that's kind of strange if you think about it. That even though Manakeets have a longer lifespan, apparently they go through life, like they go through puberty and stuff way faster than? Or maybe it's just a plot hole. Maybe it's just that, right? Okay, I've been doing so much talking right now, let's focus a bit on this one. Huh, that's strange for Donald to say. So. Huh? She's she's always overthinking 
think. She's like kind of the bookworm of the group. Trust me. Now, because of the tunnel, it's still okay, but if you have like an old unit made with uh, now it's it's kind of it's kind of strange. Also, why is there a new event going on? So maybe I missed this one. Oh, that's not a bad. That's not a bad drop. Alrighty, so we're finally done with all the formalities. Let's enter the new DLC mission that we're gonna play. So I was looking around to what to do. As you can see, we still have a lot of like trilogies to go through, but I did notice that we have one left of Smash Brethren, which is the first one, so it's best to do this one first so we can at least finish that one off first. And I like how I did this one in three turns. I, th I think it was on um, an off screen one, and this one I did on 11 turns, so let's see what this one's gonna take. Now, before we did the two other ones, I had uh, less child units and less powerful units, so now it should be smoother and easier. So this is also going to be the introduction to the other two, which is kind of stupid of me to not do them in order, but basically it's because I need those items uh, to make the other levels easier, so I had to do that one first, those two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't even see his eyes. <sighs> oh, the, I see, the Pegasus Knight. He was looking at the guy. See how it is. I see how it is. Okay, so we already have Na, Lucina, Yolora, Cynthia, Severa, Inigo, Noir, Morgan, Owen. Mm, I feel like I want to get Sumia on the field too, so she can pair up with Chrome. But who to drop, right? Let's actually no, we're gonna drop a. Uh, Sumi, and we're gonna use Cynthia to pair up with Chrom. Actually, yeah, we're gonna do that. So one thing I did do uh, in Phantom Fates, since I'm almost done with the game, was I always start the battle in this, uh, this like view map mode, and then just pair up right from the start, so that it doesn't take a turn. Which, of course, you can't do in Phantom. Awakening, so that's why I didn't do it in the Let's Play. I am an idiot. So yeah, I guess that's a good thing about uh, Fates. So just like in the other two uh, of these kinds of missions, we have uh, people from previous games in these uh, little rooms. I think I already mentioned this, but this is the same layout as a map in Finding Blade, I believe. I always, like I said, in, yeah, I, I already talked about this because I just don't remember which one is which. Sort of seals on Binding Blade. I don't know if that's the same one or Blazing Sword. I don't even know anymore. But I played one of them. It was the one with Ellie Wood, and this was the same layout. Back then, every single room had like one boss in them. But now, of course, it's filled up with uh, nostalgia, like a uh, Ike. Roy, so yeah, interesting. So I guess we start with pairing up. We're pa gonna pair up Chrome with uh, Cynthia, since Cynthia is a stronger unit. And honestly, we will be fine the way it is right now, right? If anything, Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, I mean Fire Emblem Fates, has uh, taught me to not. Pair up my units all the time. One of those much, at least. And I feel like we have valid units right here. Like, I mean, they're pretty strong. I'm not gonna lie.
with the kill force still being broken. When I was playing Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, Awakening, see, it's just something that I need to learn, right? Because it's always in my mind when I record Fire Emblem Awakening. I've been doing it for so long. But I was going to say Fire Emblem Fates. Fire Emblem Fates actually uh, has a less broken version of Gale Force, which is still called Gale Force. But I, I didn't use it. I just didn't use Dark Flyers at all. I don't know how broken it is or how not broken it is, but I just didn't do it. There is another um, broken skill though in Fire Emblem Fate. It's called Replica. Of Replicate. Replicate is at the move, well, the skill. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Basically, it. Um, it creates a copy of your unit, which is really interesting, but also very broken, of course. The only real downside is that they share the same HP uh, bar, like the same HP pool. So if the replica dies, your main unit also dies, or the unit that used the skill. But if you heal the replica, it also heals the main unit, so... Here we have some classic music. Time to tip the scales. You can do this. Leonardo, he looks like a funny character. There we go, that's a level of noir. I guess they're joining us then. Yes, nice. That door is still closed. One of them is going to open soonish. So what I suggest is that we go into the middle, or somewhat to the middle, and kind of group up so we can retaliate or attack as fast as we can. I really want to use Nas soonish. But yeah, when I was grinding, I noticed that this UI is actually... Uh, I don't know, I prefer this one. I wouldn't say it's like more efficient, but it's prettier. Okay, so that's the next wave of enemies. But yeah, when I was grinding this this UI, it made me... No. Oh, it was nice to see it again. Okay, so we have two sides open now. I wanna, I wanna bait them out like this. I think now we'll be able to take some hits there, and then over here we can slowly move in like that. Yeah, that's good. Then I want people to stay behind. Yeah, 9 damage is not gonna do much. So yeah, it seems like this one is easier in difficulty than the second and third one we played earlier on in Let's Play. Which is okay. 
Here we can see not in action. She is slow, I believe, but she does 44. I mean, I guess it's actually not that good. She won't be able to kill, but we'll see. We will see how everything goes. She has a nice looking cherry colored dragon, though. Probably my favorite color in this game. Which is, uh, not that hard to see because there's only three of them and two of them are green. But I don't know, I like the, the reddish cherry color. It reminds me of, like, Coca Cola. The, uh, the cherry flavored one. Obviously. Okay, so now I do 50 times 2, so yeah, that's. If she does double, she does double for a lot. Maybe I need to boost her speed somehow, that would be nice. Because look at that, that's 100 damage. Right from the bat. Right from the start. So those are the allies, but we will be fine. What I am going to do is, I'm gonna leave Yalorda behind together with Lucina, and they will be able to pick up a lot of enemies. And then, are those enemies? No, those are friends. I don't know if there's gonna be any bosses, so let's just stand in the middle with the other units. And then we can go to town on all the other ones. There we go. We're gonna do the three times uh, kill for strat. That's one down. Then we activate Gale Force, we switch, we attack. With a bronze sword, but that's still fine. This is your last dance. Nice. Activate Astra and still kill in one hit. That's impressive. And then we can switch again and do one last attack. Cool. Now let's see how this side fares. So yeah, even now she still gets a lot of uh, stats boosted. And she gets one extra HP because she leveled up. She has a nice bonus. Now who is going to be the most annoying to deal with? None of them are ranged, so that's okay. Let's just take care of Ike. That's something I would like to see, like, as an interesting mechanic, right? Like, you're fighting, and suddenly you kill the uh, leader of the army on the other side. All the, all the units like start moving because they're like in chaos because the one calling the shots is gone, you know? That would be an interesting like mechanic. But of course, most of the time the boss is the leader, so it ends the turn anyway. But I don't know, it would make for a chaotic map. Maybe like something like a volcanic level where uh, lava comes up, but instead of lava, they're like setting fire to the whole castle or wherever you're fighting. That would be interesting too. I don't know. The fact that they do no damage is nice. That leaves me uh, doing all the talking instead of all the thinking. That being said, maybe like in a second one of my units is gonna die because I'm reckless. So now we have Rog on our side too. But honestly, they're not gonna do much. If anything, really. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're gonna go inside and we're just gonna wreck. Oh, I see a boss. Okay, we, we're gonna do this. We're gonna use the Noble Rapier. The Black Knight is actually the, the main uh, antagonist of Radiant Dawn, I believe. So that's why it's called Black Knight. No racist. Um, and we switch. Hold on, let's switch weapon to first. Actually, I do have a spear. 
Let's try this spear for the funsies. That spear looks pretty badass. Let's not gonna lie. I challenge my fate. Nice. Uh, honestly, we can just do it on auto battle, I believe. Ah, actually, that might have been a mistake. Because there is one archer unit. I hope Cynthia will be okay. See, I got reckless. I told you it would happen. I called it out too, and I just fell right into the trap. Also, I hate it when lethality activates after having done a hit. Would have been way nicer to have lethality on the first one, because it's just unnecessary. Yeah, Cynthia's definitely gonna get attacked. Not today. Oh. Oh, sorry. Right. They don't use a bow, they use... Eleven sword? Okay, then. I, t I thought I saw a bow, but it apparently it's eleven sword. Phew. Nice. Crisis averted. And now we can do uh, some fancy things. Let's get Owain in there. Take care of this guy. My sword hand twitches. I was hoping he would activate a skill. There we go. He can do it. And then now we just have to kill one more dude. Does he have anything else? Yeah, he does have a brave sword. Might be overkill, but whatever. Yeah, definitely overkill. Hey! She looks nice. Like her design is pretty cool. No, I have not. She must be from like Radiant Dawn or something. No, he's not flawless. Well, I don't know if you're flawless. I mean, Chrome is a very good leader and, and king, but he's not perfect. I mean, strategy is apparently not his biggest uh, skill. Yeah, sure. Nice. So yeah, that's uh, another episode. Uh, if you stick around, you can see the support conversation between uh, Yellow and Inigo. And I will see you guys in the next one. Boy. Hey there. Oh. Oh.
Um... Ha, ha, ha. 